so long, it's time to get it right. Yes. So, we've established, we established last week and before, that a steward is one who manages the wealth of another. And so, uh, today we want to study managing eternal wealth. We want to manage God's money, God's eternal money that he's given us. We want to manage it correctly. Am I in the right, right crowd? Does anybody in here Amen. want to manage God's money correctly? Amen. Well, first you got to detach it from yourself and attach it to him. Yeah. And that's the difficult part because we've been using it ourselves for our, all of our lives. And it's been ours. It's been my dollar. I got two dollars. I got three dollars. And mm -hmm. now we're learning to attach it to the proper owner of it. That's God himself. And he let you do it as a little kid. He let you think that all the money you had was yours. But now we're adults and we're not supposed to stay on that milk anymore. We're supposed to grow up and, and, and attach ourselves to the right food because you can't drink milk for your, all your life and still stay alive and, and have the proper nutrients. And so we established that a steward is one who manages the wealth of another. And anyone who believes in this Bible and anyone who wants to, to, to follow what we study, I should understand that all wealth that you have obtained, whether it's uh, money that you have in your account, whether it's money that you have in your pocket, whether it's money that you have planned to, to get back and, and bring it back, or somebody bringing it back to you, it all belongs to who? God. We understand that, right? And so we understand that God prepares every dollar that comes into your pocket. He has it planned for you. And so we're not looking to fool anybody today. I'm not going to give you a, a sermon that makes you happy. I'm going to give you a sermon that, 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 that sanctifies you and sets you on the right course with God. We're not looking to fool anybody, nor are we looking to unintentionally rebel against God. How many people want to purposely rebel against God? You don't, nobody in here wants to rebel against God on purpose. I hope not. Is there anybody in here who wants to just rebel against God? And so we don't. We're not looking to unintentionally rebel against God. We we're, 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 we're here because we want to do better. Is that correct? Amen. Amen. And so uh, uh, if you want to do better, I need you to look at the person next to you and say, do better. Do better. It starts by confessing it. I want to do better. Amen. 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 And so, look, look, some of y'all are overly aggressive, but that's okay. Like, you do better. You're talking to your daughter or something. Look, stop. Stop. I'll see what y'all are doing. Uh, and so, in Deuteronomy 8, uh, verse 10 through 19, that's what we uh, discussed last week, the Lord established what he required. He established what he required from all his people in Israel. Uh, the Israelites. And so, in so many words, he said this. I'm going to break it down just in so many words. This is what he said. I'm going to sum it up. This is what he said. He said, I got you out of trouble. I provided food for you. I allowed you to achieve success. And whatever you do, I'm going to give you more success. But whatever you do, don't forget me. Look at your neighbor and say, don't forget God. Don't forget God. And so... He said basically for them not to forget them. And if you know anything about the Israelites and you know what they did over and over again, what did they do? Over and over again, they rejected the Lord. Mm -hmm. Over and over again, they turned away from him. Over and over again, they didn't follow his directions. In other words, they forgot him. They played religion and did certain things, but then they forgot God when they needed him most, which was faith. And so when it came to faith, they forgot. They simply chose not to follow God. And so we as children growing up, we as, as adults, we as uh, 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 older adults, we as people need to understand something. That we are managers of God's wealth. We are manager of God's wealth because that's what he said. He says he provides all of that stuff to us. Read it in the scripture. He says, I give you everything you have, the success you have, the houses you have. He told them, we are going to, you are going to have houses, you're going to have wealth, you're going to have all of that stuff. But he says, don't forget me. And what did they do? They forgot. They played religion, but didn't play relationship anymore. 
They trusted him to go to service, but they didn't trust him with their finances. They didn't trust him with the, 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 their walk in life. They didn't trust him as you're supposed to do. And, you're, and what does this scripture say? It is impossible to please God without what? Money? No, without faith. Amen. It's impossible to please him without faith. And so these, the first thing that we learn as managers of God's wealth is the one that we fail at the most. The first thing that we learn as managers of God's wealth in understanding that it's not our account, it's not our money, the money you have in your wallet, you think it's yours, but it's not. It's God's. <laughs> the first thing we learn as managers of God's wealth is that 90%, write that down, 90% of what he gives us uh, is what we are supposed to work with. Not a hundred percent, but ninety percent of what he gives us is supposed to. We're supposed to work with the other ten percent. The other ten percent we're supposed to turn. We're supposed to turn, and we're supposed to hand it back to God. It's so simple. We're supposed to turn, and we're supposed to hand it back to God. I want y'all all, all look at me. Look at me. Look at me. He gives you 100%. Mm -hmm. You have that 100%. You take 10% out of it. And everybody, let's turn, turn, and hand it off. Before you do anything with it, you just hand it back to God. Mm -hmm. And then you turn away, turn away, stop looking at the 10, stop looking, turn back over here, and you take the other 90%, that's what you work with. Mm -hmm. Ch challenges we have, is we take the whole 100% and we try to work with it and we get the benefits of working with it, which is failure, problems, uh, uh, challenges, debt, disappointment, and all those other things. Amen. And so we learned that if you trust him, if you can trust him, what did the scripture say in Luke? If you can trust him with, I mean, if he can trust you with the little then he can trust you with what? Much. Let's say that again. If he can trust you with what? Little. Then he can trust you with much. You're a manager. He needs to be able to trust you with the little so that he can trust you with the much. This, this, is, this is an easy transaction for y'all. This is easy. Stop looking at all the stuff you have. Stop looking at all your problems. Stop looking at all your debt and all the disappointment and all this other stuff. Let's just think about God this morning. Can we think about God this morning? Amen. Now, let's just think about God. Okay, let, this is an easy transaction. Okay, God has given you $10. Everybody got the $10? Yep. Amen. God, you take what? $1 out of the $10. Yes. You immediately hand that $1 over to God, and you put the, 10, the $9 here, and what do you do? You manage the $9. How many people are happy? You happy in the Lord? Amen. 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 Okay, you've done good. Then he increases you. He gives you $100. All right, everybody ready with the $100? You got $100. Everybody excited about that? You got $100. Yeah. You take the $100. You take what? 10 out. You don't even look at what you can buy with the $100. Yeah. You take 10 out of that. You do what? You turn and you give it to God. Amen. You don't even look at it. And then you take the other 90 and what do you do? You manage it. Yeah, come on. Then he, he, he promises that he will give you more than you can handle. And so now he gives you that $1,000. Now you have $1,000. You do what? You take $100 and what do you do? You turn. And give it to Stop God. looking at it. Give it to God. Amen. Amen. You give it to God and then what do you do? You manage the 900 that you have. So he starts to continue to increase you. Gives you ten thousand dollars. This is more important because you're not supposed to look at it. Stop looking at the thousand dollars. Stop looking at the number. Stop looking at the extra zero. He gives you ten thousand dollars. What do you do? You pull out the thousand before you even look at it. What do you do? You turn and you do what? You give it to God and then you manage the nine thousand dollars. And you're so focused on managing the $9,000, you don't realize that now he just increased it to $100,000. Because your focus is only God. It's not focused on anything else. Amen. And so he gives you $100,000. How many people are excited now? He's giving you $100,000 because you trusted him. Yeah. And he can trust you with the little. Now he can trust you with the more. Yeah. The reason you have not received or you're wondering where it's at is because you've eaten your 
tithe mm. in your offering to God. So now he's giving you, everybody excited? You got $100,000 that God has provided you with because he can trust you to do the right things with it. Well, you're saying, man, I, I really don't need $100,000. I can live off of $50,000. How many people, hey, man, you say, I can live off of $60,000. I don't need $100,000. And so now that he's blessed you exceedingly and abundantly and above all you can dare ask or think, now where what comes into effect is the offering. The, the, the tithe is the 10%. You take out of that $100,000, you say, I, I'm going to take that $10,000 and do what? And, and give it. Turn and give it to God. Now you got nine hundred or you got $90,000 just sitting here. You got $90,000 just sitting there. And, and you can do more with just $50,000. But you say, instead, uh, God, I, I, this is just too much. So I'm going to give some extra. Instead of giving $10,000, i am going to give an uh, extra $10,000 just because I can do more with $80,000. I, 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 or better yet, I can give $20,000. Now you've given $30,000 to God. The requirement was only $10,000 to God. You gave him $20,000 in offering. Since I can trust that child. So now he gives you a million. <laughs> See, we're trying to win a million. He says, I'll give you. And so now he gives you a million. What does everybody say? Oh, man, you start. No, 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 no. You start. How many people start looking at the million? Uh, you getting nosebleeds now because it's too much money? No, you're a manager of God's money. He can trust you because he trusted you with the $100,000. He trusted you with the $10,000. He trusted you with the $100. And he trusted you with one dollar. You gave ten cent on your one dollar. You gave a dollar on your hundred dollars. Or ten dollars. You gave uh, 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 ten dollars on your hundred dollars. You gave a hundred dollars on your thousand dollars. You, you just continue so you have faith. So stop looking at the million dollars and just focus on the God who's gave you all that you have. Amen. Amen. And so now you got the million dollars. You snatch what? A hundred thousand dollars. And what do you do? You turn and you do what? You give it to God. Why? Because he can do more with that hundred thousand dollars than you could have done with the whole million. Thank you, God. And so you trust him. And you take that money and don't even look at it. Why? Because the root of all evil is the love of money. Yes. So you've taken that money. You immediately. That's why he says first fruits. It's not second fruits after you think about it. It's not third fruits after you sit and say, oh, I got this bill and that bill. No, you want God to trust you. You've got to trust him. You've got to say immediately when it comes in, you turn and you give it. The reason you're giving it this way, because God gave it to you through your job. He gave it to you through your bank account. He gave it to you through your friends, your family, all your different businesses and all that other stuff. And you turn and you give it into his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Out of faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so you gave him that, you're a good manager. You trust him. You just turn and give him the money. And what does he do? He sees you as a faithful student. And he trusts you. So now that you become a money manager, he can give you millions. Some of y'all are like, whew, it's tough. Some of y'all said, oh, Lord, when we got to, see, there's an elevator, there's, a, there's an area you get to. You, some of y'all got off at the first floor, so I can't even deal with $10,000. Some of y'all got to $100,000, oh, that's just enough, I can do more than enough. Some of y'all got to uh, uh, $500,000, some of y'all got to a million and said, man, that's good, I can give more into, my, into the kingdom of God. Amen. And so the mistake we have as Christians is we think the, the, oh, the offering is, 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 is part of the, the, that's what you're supposed to do anyway. No, the offering is off the blessing that he gives you back for having faith in him. The raise you get, the increases you get, the, all the, the structure that he puts on your life, then you say, oh, you, you look at it, you say, I got a 10% increase or a 100% increase or a 1,000% increase, I got all this, and you're not thinking about the money and what you can do with it, you're thinking about God and how you can bless his kingdom. Amen. If you get that principle, your life is blessed because the enemy can't come in and touch the money that you're managing unless you're operating in the flesh instead of the spirit. 
So if 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 God uh, removes a thousand dollars from you, you're not worried because you've already been faithful. Mm -hmm. You've given uh, you've given your ten percent of that thousand dollars. So He's taking it from you. You're not worried about that. You're not sitting there saying, God, when's it gonna come back? You're thanking Him because He's about to bless you. He's about to open up the the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you. Yeah. You're not worried about it. Why? Because you're faithful. You're faithful to God. You're not worried about what Satan says, what your friends say, what your family say, because you're faithful to God and you trust him more than you trust your current situations. Amen. And so the one thing we learned is he does not need you. He doesn't need me. But he uses us to do his works. So if we get off the notion that all we have is ours, and we take on the notion that it's not ours, it's his, then we can get on the pathway to truth. Some financial problems that we have begin and end with what I just told you. That's it. I don't want you to raise your hand, but think about it. How many people in here have financial problems? Don't raise your hand. How many people in here want more? Don't raise your hand. How many people in here want your finances to be blessed? Don't raise your hands. I'm telling you a simple principle. Simple. That blesses your finances. We don't get paid. I'm not getting paid by the church. But the Lord has blessed my finances. I, 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 I'm not interested in all that. But he continues to bless me. Not because of me, but because I trust him. Amen. I have those mind battles sometimes. Where I've had them before where I say, oh, man, God, you giving me this extra. Do I tithe off this extra? And I say, no, devil, you're not getting me with that one. Anybody ever had that battle? Have anybody ever lost that, that battle? Because I've lost that several times. Amen. This is extra. I'm just going to keep this. Anybody ever said that before? Amen. Who joined the game with me? Amen. Amen. Say amen, say amen real loud because the camera amen. needs to hear y'all. Amen. <laughs> no, I've done that. Had that fight with my mindset and say, oh, this is mine. Woo -hoo. This is, I got to tie this. You don't have to tie any of it. But the scripture says be a cheerful gift. Yes. And when you trust God, yes. you operate in cheer. Yes. And so I now I don't even start to mind battle myself because I can't outgive God. He has blessings. He has blessings coming my way that are that I don't even know about yet. And so I just start to trust him. And I, I see money come in and money go out. I see money come in and go, go out. Money come in, go out. And so when God starts to give me money to manage, I say, oh, man, thank you, Lord. I'll be able to give more into the kingdom of God. Amen. And I don't even think about what I can buy anymore. I think about the kingdom of God first. So the first thing... Um, that we normally have problems with are to repairing our finances. You can't even get to step B and step C until you do step A. I can sit down with you and give you a financial counseling and say, well, this is what you need to do with your finances. This is what you, need. you need to do this, you need to take this, you need to stop with the, uh, the overdrafts and all these other problems, all the other challenges, all the other things, and, and tell you all that other stuff, and you won't listen to me. Why? Because you haven't even sowed into the kingdom in the first place. You've been, you know, the scripture says we rob God. He don't need it, but we rob that. Heck, we don't rob God. We rob ourselves. What? Wisdom. The wisdom comes from him. The knowledge comes from him. But you don't even access the knowledge because you're not willing to trust him. Amen. So the area that we must fix first is our trust in God. And so for children, um, if you take on this principle, I wish... I wish I would have known that years ago. I wish I would have known that with all the money that's come along in my pockets. I wish I would have known that when I was younger. I wish I would have known that if I just take and, and first think about God and give back to God, that he'll always bless me. And then, then you'll sit and you'll realize that he blessed you with a good job, not because of you, but because of your trusting him. He blessed you to be able to pay your bills. No, he's not because of you, but because you trusted him. He blessed you to be debt free. How many people would love to be debt free? Can you give God a round of applause if you want to be debt free? 
And then he allows you to be debt free before you even have debt. And so now you're looking at your debt and you're saying, okay, I've got this thousand dollar credit card and I've got a chair that I want to get. The chair costs a hundred dollars. I have the hundred dollars to spend on the on the chair, but instead of spending the hundred dollars on the chair, I'm going to charge that hundred dollars and then pay it off. What do we do? Sometimes as, as, as people who don't understand financial wealth or success, we say, oh man, I want that $1,000 chair. I got a $1,000 credit. I don't have $1,000 in my bank account. Now I'm just going to charge the chair. That's because wisdom hasn't been given to you to understand that if you don't have it, you should not live beyond your means. In this church, we had metal chairs for year after year after year because we trusted God. And he can do more with the metal chairs than we could have done putting in debt with the expensive chairs. Amen. And so people would say, when are you going to get cushions? And I said, when God provides it. Amen. And guess what? He provided it. You're sitting on the wealth of God. Can you give him honor and glory in the house of the Lord? Yeah. We have to be faithful with what we do. And so uh, the, the, the one thing that we learned is we learned that uh, that we were spared when, when, when things happened to us. Uh, that God was the one, you know, like what he told the Israelites, he, he, you know, he was the one who provided for them. He's the one who provided for you also when you were spared from a deadly disease or when you were spared from an illness. Anybody ever experienced illness this year? Anybody? Can you get a, uh, can I get a hallelujah this morning? Yeah. Anybody ever experienced an illness where you said, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. Anybody ever said that? Yeah. But you made it through, so you should give honor and glory to God because it had nothing to do with you, but everything to do with him. There are people dying daily. Mm -hmm. yes. And so if you, if God provides for you, you have to stop recognizing everything else and give all honor and glory to God. Yes. You have to stop looking at your problem and saying, man, I'm thanking the Lord that I did this right. No, it wasn't you. It was him yes. spreading his grace yes. and his mercy upon your life. Amen. <clears throat> so here is where we're at. Offering, I want you to understand that clearly. The offering is the additional. You don't give an offering because you want to receive more from God. You say, God, I want to give 11% uh, oh, because I want to be blessed. No, you're blessed to give 10%. He'll bless you because you trust him to give more money because he's going to provide for you. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. My brother, how are you, sir? It's good to see you. Amen. amen. Amen, amen. And the Lord just blessed me right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord, look, I'm sorry. The Lord just blessed me in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Wow. The Lord always teaches me during services. Amen. Mm. And so, what we realize is that mm, the 10% is just what he's asking. See, it's funny because if God said, if God said, well, I need y'all to get 50%. Some of us have been out of the door a long time ago. If he says, I need 60%, we'd be like, oh man, but if we had been doing it all our life, there would be nothing to it. And so now, because sin has creeped in all of our lives, 10% seems like a lot because you couldn't manage 100%. You get it? So the 10% was the problem because you couldn't manage 100 And so now he's trying to show you, look, you want to be blessed? Why don't you start listening to what I've given you? You're my child. You're my, my chosen child who I've saved since the beginning of time. I've given you access to the kingdom of heaven, and you choose to access this world. Have you ever wanted to, like, laugh at the devil? When you operate in God's principles... You can just laugh at the things that he tries to bring into your life because you know you did it right. Amen. And you know that the blessing is on the other side of what he tries to curse Amen. you with. Yes. Yes, and so today we are reading from Matthew 25, 
We're reading from Matthew 25, starting at the 14th verse. And um, look, we are on point. Y'all want to get on, on point with your finances? You want to be blessed in the kingdom of God? Uh, we are starting from Matthew 25 at the 14th verse. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Amen, amen, amen. And so um, this is where Jesus is continuing to give a parable on what the kingdom of heaven is like, which is the reign of God. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. It's the reign of God in the hearts and lives of the believers. The reign of God in the hearts and the lives of the believers. And so we're reading uh, verse 14. It says this. Again, it will be like, and he's talking about the kingdom of heaven. It will be like a man going on a journey who was called, uh, who called his servants and entrusted them, uh, his wealth to them. Mm. Who is the man on the journey? Everybody say God. God. Who are the servants? Everybody say believers. Believers. Oh, man. That's the Christians who are called by God for God's purpose, devoted to his praise and employed for his work. So the believers are entrusted uh, with his wealth. And so that's, script, that's scripturally clear right there. What does it say? God went on a journey and he entrusted who with his wealth? Everybody say me. Me. So God entrusted you with his wealth. And here's what happened on that. To one he gave five bags of gold. That's like, uh, each bag is like 20 years of work. <coughs> mm. to, to one he gave five bags of gold, to another he gave two bags, and to another he gave one bag. And here's the thing. The next word, the next scripture says, each according to his ability. One important thing to recognize is the master left them. Left them all that they needed to work. Uh, not uh, so that they wouldn't remain idle. He left them all the success. He left them the money. And so it's not, he didn't say, I'm going to leave and then eventually I'll give you the money. He said, I've left, I mean, I'm going to go on a trip and he's going to leave each one of them uh, bags of gold based on where they are, their abilities, what God has provided them with. <coughs> That's you. So you look at all the money that he has provided you with. He's left, and we're sitting here wanting to make more money. How many people who wanted to make more money? How many people want, want to have more success, want to have this and that? God has given you exactly what you need to be successful before you wanted all that. Amen. So that's the important part. So, um, so, we, so we recognize that, and then it also, it also says each according to their ability. And so... Um, this, this ability, where, you know, one thing we want to also understand is, according to the ability, it's talking about the spiritual calculations, the, his abilities, what he's given you. You say, I don't have enough. No, you have exactly what you need. You say, I, I don't have enough. No, you're blessed. Yeah, I don't have the, the money that I No, you have exactly what you need. It's not the money that you need. It's the, the, the gifts that he's given you, the spiritual blessings that he's given you to know him, to have faith in him, to trust in him. So... Here's what happened. One he gave, it says one he gave uh, uh, five bags, one he gave two bags, and one he gave one bag, each according to his ability. Then it said he went off on his journey. And um, it says the man who had received five bags went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. Everybody said that's who I want to be. And so... There was one he gave a, a, a more abilities, and there was one with less abilities that he gave less work to do. And there was one he gave minimal abilities who was given minimal work to do. Each had opportunities to do work. There were no excuses. And the one went to work immediately, and he went from having five bags to having what? Ten bags. Immediately. Why? Be not because of the bags he had, but because he trusted God with the abilities that God had given him. And so the one with minimal ability, uh, and so uh, the one with minimal abilities. Let's see what he does in a minute here. Uh, I want you to write this down. You have what you need to be successful in God already, right now. So verse sixteen, it says, "The man who received five bags went out and put his money to work and uh, had five bags work more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more." It says they went at once. They didn't make excuses, but they used what the Lord had provided them with to invest. 
verse, verse 18, it says, But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Everybody say, that's not me. That's not me. And so the, there's two things that I want you to understand that happened immediately. The first two went off and worked immediately and made no excuses and probably had uh, the, the correct perspective, operating, understanding that the money was not theirs. It was who? It was the masters. They were just what? Managers of the money. So the first two had the right perspective. They took on the money that was coming in that God had provided. They knew it was provided by God and they invested it properly. They were also, uh, the other thing you have to understand is they were given two different uh, uh, amounts of money. And let's see what happened with, uh, with this when the master returned. It said, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled the accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, let's all say this together. Well done, good and faithful what? Servants. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Yeah. Mm. So you would think, you know, if, if the, the man who had five gained five more, if the man who had, had two uh, was looking at the other person, what the other person had, then the man had to multiply his by what? By five. He has to make ten so that he can be equal to the man with five. But that's not what God looks for. God is not looking for you to do the same thing as me or me do the same thing as you. He's looking for all of us to just do our job that he has provided for Amen. us. Amen. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, let's say it all together. Well done, good and faithful, what? Servant. Mm, mm -mm. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Amen. Wow. Uh-oh. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you had not sown and gathering where you had not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See here what belongs to you. Wow. His master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I had not sown and gather where I had not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put your money, put my money. No, your money. No, my. What does he say? My money. Why? Because it was never his money in the first place. It wasn't his money to hide. It's not your money to hide. It's not your money to sit back and say, I'm not going to give into God's kingdom. I'm not going to help God's people. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to pay my bills and take care of my... It's not yours to do that with. Amen. Amen. Oh, man. Well, then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received back, it back with interest. Wow. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. Mm. He had an equal opportunity in his abilities. God was only expecting him to do what he could do with what God had provided him with, not extra. So because he was unfaithful by not increasing the money that the Lord had provided him with, the Lord's money was taken was taken from him and given to somebody else. It says here, so take the bags from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. Verse 29 says, for whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. 
and throw, uh, throw that worthless servant outside into darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's not talking about e in eternal life. That's talking about now, what you need to do now. This is not talking about what we do when we get to heaven. This is talking about what you do with your finances now. You have to be careful about every dollar you spend now because it's not your finances. It is God's. And so once we get that, you understand that the one who has two bags wasn't complaining. He wasn't sitting there saying, why don't I have 10 bags like the other guy? Why don't I have five bags? The one who had five bags wasn't saying, if I just had 10 bags. Oh, they weren't making excuses. And so us as believers, us as Christians, shouldn't make excuses about the situation that we're in. We should just have faith in God and do his will. The master's wealth, I want you to get this, represents... God's spiritual gifts that, and abilities that are given to every believer. Mm -hmm. They're invaluable in their blessings of God. Each one of you has a gift of God. If we talk to each one of you, we can look at, I can look at each one of you and tell the gifts that God has given you, the ability that he's given you. Some of you have the gift of encouragement. Some of you have the gift to write. Some of you have the, the, the gift of praise and worship. Some of you have a given gift. Some of you have a gift of, 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 of with your hands. Some of you have a, a gift with your mind. Some of you have the gift to encourage and talk to people. But if you're not using them, God says he will remove that gift and give it to somebody who's going to use it. Amen. Is that what you want? Do you want to go on with your life just doing your will and not doing the will of God? God can restore every one of us. He can renew every one of us. He, can, uh, he has set every one of us apart. But we have to be willing to do his will. Amen. And so the Lord has already given you or given us exactly what we need to receive more. But we have to become effective with what he's already provided us with. If he, if, if, if he can't trust you with $10, why is he going to give you a million? Some of us go, for, go from the room perspective. Some of us go and say, man, I want to get that million and that million. I want to rent that $500 million. And No, you're different from the people in this world. The people in this world, that's all they got. In this church, in this, in this body of Christian believers, you've got God. And so he's got to be able to trust you with one dollar. If you don't give ten cent off your dollar, why is he going to give you 500 million to run off in the wilderness? Mm. Everybody say amen this morning. Amen. So, the... Um, the master's wealth represents those things, the spiritual gift and ability that God has given us. The Lord has already given us exactly what we need to be successful. But we have to be more effective with what he has provided us with. First, we must realize that it's his. It's not your gift. It's not your gift. It's not my gift to be able to encourage y'all with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is God's gift to me. That's why I must encourage y'all with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't say, well, I'll come to serve. What if I called you? I say, oh, I'm not going to be there this Sunday. I'll, I'll be there in a, a month from now. Then I'll just come back a month from now. We'll have another service then. Does that make sense? No. So I have to take the ability that God you give me and have to use it to the fullest extent. What if I say, oh, I'll be there every other Bible study or one Bible study out of the month. Or I'll come whenever I can. Make sense? No. Why? Because it was a gift God gave to me. It can leave on this Tuesday. It can leave on next Tuesday. It can leave on five Tuesdays from now. But I've got to give it all that I got. Amen. Because he's my God. Yes. And I'm his child. Amen. What the Lord has provided us with was never ours. And the moment that we make it ours, it becomes a problem. Some of you said, some of you think it's your child. <laughs> but if it was your child, you could keep him forever, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? Are we right in here? Amen. 
Some of you think you own that child, but if you own that child, you can stop them from doing some of the things they're doing, but you can't because you don't own them. Some of you say, my daughter, my son, but you, how many of you know what they're doing in their private times? The only one who knows what they're doing in their private times is the true owner. That's the Lord God Almighty who Amen. was and is and is to come. That's who you need to give honor to for the children you have. When you trust him with the little things, you give him your children. You trust him with your children. He'll take care of them in their worst circumstances. He'll stop them in their worst challenges. He'll help them on the right path in their worst situations. He'll lift them up when you can't lift them. He'll talk to them when you can't speak. Amen. But if you think they're yours, you get the results of trying to be God in their lives. Amen. Mm. So, when you realize that it's not uh, yours anymore, that they're not your children, that nothing you own that you think you own is yours, then you'll start walking in the right mindset. And when we take out those moments of thinking things are ours, when we think it's not our money, some of us make the mistake of thinking it was our time. When I have time to come to church, <laughs> when I have time to get up and pray, woo! when I have time to come to Bible study, whoa, when I have time to read the word of God, what? When I have time to bow down on my knees, maybe next service I'll get up and lift my hands. Maybe next service I'll scream out to God. No, you are not guaranteed tomorrow. This is the time to praise God. It is his time. It's never been your time. He can take you out tonight. Amen. Don't forsake, don't sit back and think that God is waiting on you to get yourself right. Come on, come on. He can remove you right now. Yes. Amen. So, when you realize it wasn't yours in the first place and nothing is yours, when you realize that all the gifts you've been given from God were given from God, and they're not yours. They're just given to you, to use. When you realize that the children that you have are not yours, they're given to you by God, they're loaned to you by God, then you will not get mad when one leaves. You'll be sad and you'll grieve, but you'll trust that he took back his child. Yes. Our mindsets have to be right. You want to get your financial mindset right. You have to get your spiritual mindset right. Yes. If you can't trust him with 10 cents, you won't trust him with a thousand dollars, you won't trust him with a million dollars. If you can't trust him with your child, you won't trust them when they're doing right or when they're doing wrong. Yes. Amen. As Christians, we have to do better. We have to do better and, and, and know that things are not ours. The as believers, I want you to understand this and take this in 100%. The Lord has loaned us everything we have. Amen. It's all, all His. I had a shirt, I think it was in the sixth grade. It was a cool shirt. It had a little, you know, I ain't going to tell you about it because it looked crazy now when I look at pictures from it. But I had a shirt. <laughs> Um, and uh, hey, 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 watch this, watch this, because y'all, this happened to y'all. It was, it was, I thought it was cute. I thought it was awesome. I looked at it, y'all, look at that. And um, I would wear that shirt, and, and um, I went to shirt, uh, school one day, and uh, somebody told me, um, you know what they told me, right? I said, that shirt looked good. I try to wear that shirt every day, you know what I mean? Anybody done that? You get that, you get that, you wear it all the time, you ask some extra stuff, too. you wear different jeans with the same shirt. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. hey, look, I'm just telling you my story. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you had black one day, you had blue jeans with the same shirt. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, I, I love that shirt. Mm -hmm. And I thought that shirt was the best thing that, that my parents had ever bought me. I loved it. But it wasn't my shirt. Because if it was, I'd still have it. Yeah. But it perished just like everything else is perishes. 
And so what you start to realize is no matter how much you want to keep your child, no matter how much you want to keep your cars, no matter how much you want to keep your houses or keep anything that you think you own, you don't own anything. It goes back to where it came from, to the creator of heaven and earth. Only God knows where that shirt is now. <laughs> it's that bad wheel now because I wore that thing out. <laughs> you couldn't sell that again. <laughs> Y'all got issues with it. Okay, so we realize that the Lord loans us everything. We have to take on the right uh, manage, uh, the right mindset and manage it as it says it is. It's God's. <laughs> with our children, we don't want to just be average parents. We want to learn how to be the best parents we can be with our children. Amen. You can be the best parent by teaching them about financial wealth and success. Not that not, 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 I mean, you might have messed it up, but teach them the principles that you're learning now so that they can be better. Look at your neighbors and say, do better. Do better. Break those generational curses that says don't listen to God. Go out and get your own money. Go out and have your own success. Do this, do that. Get a job. Get this. Get... No, look, look at God first. And allow him to construct your life. Amen. The house that you desire, the house that you are waiting for, it's there for you. How many people want the house? How many people are looking for a house from God? Amen. It's waiting for you. <laughs> but it has a condition. It's waiting on you when God learns to trust you with the apartment that he's given you. I just touched some houses there. Amen. If God can't trust you with the apartment, why is he going to trust you with the house? If he can't trust you to pay the yes. rent in the apartment, why is he going to trust you to pay the yes. rent on the house? Yes. You have to learn to be faithful with the little so that he can give you more. You sit there and say, I am not going to pay that rent. I'm just going to be late and run from them. You're not running from them. You're running from God. Amen. Amen. Mm. Why would God provide you with more in your account if you continue to have overdrafts in the account you have? Why is he going to provide you more if you're content with those little things? You're content with having negative. You're content with barely making it. You're not, you're not satisfied with giving him anything because you spend everything frivolously. Mm. How many people want more in their lives? Amen. How many? How many truly Amen. want more in your lives? Amen. It's not, you're not waiting on God. You're, God's waiting on you. Get yourself in order with God. You have $100, but you can't give him 10 when all 100 is his. And then you spend it frivolously and then ask him for help. Ooh, wow. You wanted this financial service uh, so that you can understand your finances. I'm only trying to help you and give you the information that God has given me. Amen. It's up to you to follow them. Amen. You want to get yourself right? First start focusing on God. It's not if I get more, I'll do better. You have to do better so that he can give you more. <laughs> Y'all thought it was the other way around. You thought you would do better first. I mean, you God will provide you, and then you'll start doing better. Man, if I could just get this month's rent paid, if I could just get this this increase in my anybody ever said, I just want a raise. If I can get a raise, I'll do better with my finances. No, if you were doing better, you'd get the raise because God would provide it for you. Oh, oh. wow. If you really want better, you have to use what you have now and show the Lord that you're faithful and he'll get you out of your situation and he'll help you with your situation. But it starts with you. You say, you say well, God, uh, that's all I got to do is give. No, 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 you got to trust him, not give. Because if you give, you're giving like his, like his credit card. I'm applying for a higher loan. I'm applying for higher credit. No, that's not what you're doing. You're giving because you trust God. And so, for us, the first thing we want to do is get our finances in order by first placing God first. Mm -hmm. You don't place Him first. I can't help you. I can give you all kinds of principles, but they ain't going to help you. 
And kids, for, for the kids who are in here, who are starting their lives out, if you focus on this principle, you can overcome some generational curses that our families have been through. But if you don't, you'll end up in the same curse. How many people in here want to break generational curses over your household? Amen. You have to start by listening to the God who destroys all yokes and lifts all burdens and destroys all curses. And the, the curses must submit to the name of Jesus. Yeah. If you want your curses, your challenges, your trials, your tribulations to submit to Jesus, first you have to submit to him. Amen. Amen. If you cannot make car payments on time, why are you asking God for another car? Amen. I'd like to get the better version of what you couldn't pay in the first place. Yes. I'm trying to help you. Look, I'm laughing because I've done these things too. But we, we, we do these insane things and then we're asking God for help and God is saying if you 